If you have your Bibles this morning, please turn to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. And we will be looking at verse, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And so I'll read it again this morning for emphasis. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, last I was here, we spent time looking at verse number one, talking about running the Christian race. And we primarily spent most of our time examining verse one, but today I want us to look at verse number two, where he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And I want to lift up the idea there, the first phrase, where it says, looking unto Jesus. Now, as we look at that phrase, looking unto Jesus, what the Hebrew writer means is that as we run the Christian race, we are to focus on Jesus. And we focus so much so on Jesus that we have as if it was tunnel vision that we see nothing else but Jesus Christ. We're so intently focused on Jesus that everything else in, in our lives is blocked out. And so as we look to Jesus this morning, we see the title of our message there, Looking to Jesus. And that's what I want us to focus on for a few minutes this morning, looking unto Jesus. But as we look to Jesus, I want to first begin with the idea of we must start with the Lord. In everything that we do in our lives, we must have the Lord at the center of it. So as we think about running the Christian race, living this life, we must always start with Jesus. Not only must we start with Jesus, but we must stay with Jesus. As we run the Christian race, there are going to be difficulties and hardships and things that we face in our lives that's going to cause us to be discouraged sometimes, cause us to sometimes want to give up. But even though we face those things in our lives, we must stay with Jesus, keep our focus on Jesus. And in, and in the end, ultimately, we need to end with the Lord. That is, at the end of our lives, when we get to the judgment and we stand before God, we want to hear God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And the way that we can do that is that we stay with God and we end with the Lord. So as we look this morning at the idea of looking to Jesus, there are some, of the, there are some things we can do in our lives that have great value, especially the things that we do in our lives that bring glory and honor to God, those things that are pleasing to God. We are laying up treasures in heaven, so to speak. And then there are other things we can do in our life that uh, is worthless. In the end, it doesn't really amount to much. We are focusing on the wrong thing. We're putting our energies and efforts into something, as Solomon says, that is vain. You know, it's just in the end, it's not a spiritual thing, and it is vain. And so we want to do things in our lives that's going to accomplish eternal value so that it won't be forgotten in this world, but more importantly, that it's something that is pleasing and acceptable to God. And if we're going to be pleasing to God, we're going to have to live our lives with our focus in the right place. 
in 2004, uh, in the Olympic Games, there was a man named Matt Edmonds, and he was in the event, the rifle event. And he had played so well and done so well in the event that he came down to his last shot. And uh, he had done so well that everyone knew and everyone understood that he was going to win the gold medal. All he had to do is just hit the target. He didn't have to hit the bullseye. He just needed to hit the target, and he was going to win the gold medal. But what he did, as he describes, as a rare mistake that happens in competition, he stood in lane two, and as he aimed down the line, he aimed at a target in lane three. And as you know, probably what happened, he hit the target in lane three. It was a pretty good shot but he received a score of zero because he aimed at the wrong target. And so what am I saying? I'm saying even if we hit the right target in life, if we are aiming at the wrong target, it's still not going to uh, uh, allow us to achieve what we're looking for in our lives. We have to make sure we are aiming at the right target in life. Who am I looking at? Who am I trying to emulate? Who am I trying to follow in my life? And I submit to you today, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that we need to look to Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. Many of God's children are going to get to the end of their lives and find out that they were looking at the wrong thing or they were placing their emphasis on the wrong target. You see, you may be successful, but if you hit the wrong target, it's still not going to achieve the goal that we're trying to achieve in this life. So as we think about the topic of looking to Jesus, I want us to first think about the idea is that we must look to Jesus in everything. Paul writes in Acts chapter 17 and verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Everything that we do in our lives, in everything that we do in our lives, we must look to Jesus. Now, we live in a society where uh, it is called a dualistic society, where, and we even have laws that say there's a separation between church and state. And what I mean is that many people in our culture and society have the idea that there's a separation between the spiritual and the physical. But I want us to understand that those two things are connected. What we do in, with our physical bodies and in our physical lives has a direct connection to the spiritual. Right? And so when we think about everything that we do in our lives, when we decide we want to go somewhere, when we decide we're going to make new friends, when we decide that we're going to do anything in our life, it can be anything, we must make sure we have Jesus involved in the plan. We must look to Jesus in everything because everything that we do has a spiritual connection. Why? Because it is in him we live and we move when we have our very being. We cannot escape God. God is here with us today. And God will be here with us when we leave here today. Everything that we do is in the presence of God. The Lord is not far from each one of us. And God is concerned with everything that we're doing. Turning your Bibles to the book of Psalm. Hold your finger there in Hebrews, but turn over to Psalm 139. Psalm 139, and we will look at verse, verses 7 through 13. David writes, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in the grave, behold, thou art there. If I take wings 
of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike unto thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, and thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. What is David saying? David is saying no matter where we go, God is always there with you. So understanding that fact, we should always include the Lord in everything that we do. Why? Because we are his children. We are the offspring of God. And because we are God's children, we need to look to the Lord for guidance, for instruction. You see, Christianity should be something that's practical in our lives. Not just we understand what the Bible says and we know what the Bible says, but we must use the Bible in our everyday lives in how we interact with people. And in this particular case, I'm talking about how we make our plans. James writes in James chapter 4 and verses 13 through 15, he says, Go to now, ye that say, Tomorrow we will go into such a city and buy and sell and get gain, and continue there a year, whereas you know not what shall be on tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. For ye ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we shall do this and we shall do that. We should include the Lord in everything that we do. And in everything means that we should include the Lord not just in the bad times, but also in the good times. We have a tendency to focus on the Lord when things are not going well for us. But I want to remind each one of us to include God and include the Lord in our plans, even when things are going well for us. And when we do this, then we can come boldly before the throne of God in prayer and have confidence that God hears me, confidence that my prayers are going to be answered. So we must look to Jesus in everything, but also we must look to Jesus for everything. Notice what the Bible says in John chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. Jesus says, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear this verse and I read this verse, it brings me great comfort to know that the Lord is going to answer my prayers. Anything you ask for, the Lord says that he will provide. Everything that we need, the Lord provides for us. Food, clothing, shelter, love, relationships, companionships. We must understand that those things come from Jesus, the Lord. Now, a lot of times we look for things in our lives and we look for it in the wrong place. So I want to emphasize this morning also here is that society, self-help books, friends, philosophers, those things are not going to provide us the happiness that we're looking for. I believe each one of us in this room today, anybody that may be watching this, we are all looking for something. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Otherwise, we wouldn't spend our time and energy uh, in spiritual things. So we're all searching for something better than what we have now. And I want to say to you today is that we can find that in Jesus. That's where we can find it. We can't find it in man. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah chapter 17, in verse 5, he says, Thus said the Lord, Cursed is the man that trusteth in man that maketh uh, the flesh uh, his arm, but blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord whose hope the Lord is. So we have to put our trust, we have to put our hope, 
We have to put all those things that we're looking for in our lives. We must put that in Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus has the power to give us what we need. When he says all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, I believe he's talking about the resurrection. He's talking about the church. But also he's talking about in our lives. Jesus has all power to provide the things that you need in your life. You see, there's power in prayer. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that there is power in prayer. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, in verses 7 through 8, he says, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. God has the ability to provide what we need through Jesus Christ. And then Jesus says in Matthew chapter 21 and 22, he says, All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. James says in James chapter 5 and verse 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, availeth much. The Lord has promised to supply all of our needs and not supply our needs according to our understanding, but the Lord is going to supply what we need according to his riches and his power and his ability. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that we should ask or think. So I want to impress upon our minds today to understand that we must look to Jesus for everything that we need in our lives. We must look to Jesus in everything. We must look to Jesus for everything but we must also look to Jesus with everything. And what do I mean when I say with everything? He's, Paul says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. With everything that we have in us, we should look to Jesus, giving maximum energy and effort is the idea under consideration. You've probably heard a saying, and they say it all the time in sports, you must give 110%. You hear coaches say that all the time. And you probably uh, heard someone tell you that if you're going to accomplish anything in life, you're going to have to give some effort. It's going, to have, it's going to be hard for you to accomplish. If you really want to be successful in something, you're going to have to give it your all. Right? You've heard that before. Well, it's the same thing in our Christian lives. If we're going to make it to heaven, we can't be half step being a Christian. We're going to have to give everything that we have in us to the Lord and for his purpose. We shouldn't hold back anything when it comes to our service for God. Turn over again to uh, Romans chapter 6. I'll show you something. Romans chapter 6. You probably read this before. Romans chapter 6 and verse 15. And Paul talks about being uh, servants of righteousness versus servants of unrighteousness. So we're going to have to give it our all. Romans chapter 6 and verse number 15. Notice what Paul says. He says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were servants of sin, but have obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being made free from sin, you became servants of righteousness. Notice verse 19. 
I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. As for as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. So what is Paul saying? Paul is saying the same energy and effort that you use when we were out in the world living in sin, you see, we didn't hold back then. We didn't hold back. We were who we were. We were not ashamed of it. And we did what we wanted to do with all of our energy and all of our heart. Paul says the same energy and effort that we gave to sin is the same energy and effort we need to give to God now. We need to give everything that we have in us to living this Christian life. We need to look to Jesus with everything that we have in us. Not having one foot in the church and one foot in the world. James says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And here's an example where Jesus says really the same thing. When Jesus says in Luke 10 verse 27, he says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with what? All thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You see, everything, not just some of us, but God is asking for all of us. What does that mean? If there's something good that we can do, we should do it. If there's something encouraging we should, can say, we should say it. If there's an opportunity for us to forgive, then we ought to forgive. If there's a, a chance for us to say something nice, then we ought to say it. We should take every opportunity that we have in our lives to be a child of God. Because, you know, one chance may be the only chance that you have. Paul says, as we have, therefore, opportunity. Let us do good unto all men, especially they of the household of faith. So Jesus, looking to Jesus with everything means to look at, uh, looking to him totally with what, everything that we have in us. And that's how we're going to be victorious over uh, this world. And my final point this morning, we must look to Jesus in everything. We must look to Jesus for everything. We must look to Jesus with everything, and we must look to Jesus through everything, through everything. Peter writes, but the God of grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So we should Thank God for the happy times. And we should thank God for the difficult times. You see, when we go through suffering and difficulties in life, Jesus is there. You know, there's an old song that uh, people sing, and, and it, it goes something. I'm not going to sing it. It says, uh, Glory, Hallelujah. The storm is passing over. Anybody heard that song before? Glory, if you haven't, go look it up. It's a, it's a good song. Glory, hallelujah. The storm is passing over. And I began to think about the meaning. What does that mean? Does, does, does the, did the writer mean that I'm happy because I'm on the other side of the storm? Glory, hallelujah. The storm is passing over. I'm, I'm just about to be out of this difficulty in life. But as I began to think about the song, I said, well, maybe the writer is saying, glory, hallelujah, the song, the, the storm is passing over. Maybe I should be happy that I'm enduring difficulties in my life. Now, that sounds backwards. That sounds, you know, like a paradox. How can I be happy when I'm going through difficulties? Right? But when we're going through difficulties and uncertainty, and fear in our lives, those are times when we can hold on to Jesus 
even closer. You know, David says in Psalm 23 and verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. So when we are going through the difficulties, you know, th those are times for us to actually praise God. Those are times for us to be happy because we understand that as we go through this, I have something I can hold on to, something that's stable, something that's never, uh, never going to waver. God is never going to fail, and God has never not kept his promise. Now, there was a story told one time about a man who was uh, riding in the car with his child, and the child was driving. And the, the father knew that the, a storm was coming, and the child is driving, and, and then the child sees the storm, and it, it's a terrible storm. The, one of the worst storms that the child has ever seen and experienced. The wind is boisterous. The rains are coming down. It's a scary and frightening moment. And as the child approaches the storm and, and is in the midst of the storm, driving through the storm, you know, the child looks over to the father and says, uh, can we just pull over because I'm afraid that we're not going to make it. And then the father says to the child, no, I want you to just keep going. I want you to trust me. I want you to just keep going. And eventually, they drove through and they got to the other side of the storm and they made it out of the danger. And when they got to the other side of the storm, the father asked the child, do you know why I wanted you to keep going? And the child says, no, I don't understand. And the father said to the child, well, if we would have pulled over to the side and stopped going down the road because we were afraid, then we still would be in the storm right now. You see, you trusted me, and you were able to make it through the storm to the other side. And so what am I saying? This is how our father deals with us. All we need to do is just hold on, and he's going to help us through the storm. So through everything that we experience in our lives, we must look to Jesus, keep our sights set on Jesus, because he's going to see us through. And even when things are not going so well for us in our lives, we can be happy. Why James says, my brethren, count it all joy that you fall into divers temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Then he says in James chapter 1 and verse 12, blessed is the man who endured temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Looking to Jesus. Holding on to him in the midst of suffering is how we get through the things in our lives. And I want to ask you this morning, just for a second, just think and reflect back on your life to the most difficult or the most painful thing that you've experienced, whatever that is for you. And I want to ask you one question. How did you get through it? How did you get through it? You see, you are here today. Why? Because you held on to the Lord. You trusted God. You kept your eyes focused and set on God, and he brought you through. Sure did. And the same God that brought you through to this moment today is the same God that's with you now. And the same God that's going to stay with you for the rest of your life. But you see, we got to have our focus in the right place. That's how you got through it then. And that's how we're going to continue to get through it for the rest of our lives. So we have to look to Jesus. And one example, quick example, is the Apostle Paul. Paul is an example for us. Because he looked to Jesus in everything that he experienced. He understood when he says the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. He understood that in this life, that, you know, the life we live is a spiritual thing, not just physical. 
he looked to Jesus for everything in his life. That's why he could make the statement, my God shall supply all of your needs. He's speaking from experience. He looked to Jesus with everything. When he says, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live the life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He looked to Jesus with everything. And finally, he looked to Jesus through everything. You remember in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7, he says, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. But he besought the Lord three times. And what did the Lord say to him? Thy grace is sufficient. You see, the things he was going through, who did he look to? He looked to Jesus. And so my point this morning and my invitation as we begin to close and prepare to uh, think about our decision that we're going to make for our lives today, I want us to understand we must look to Jesus in everything that we do. We must look to Jesus for everything that we need. We must look to Jesus with everything that we have in us. And we must look to Jesus through anything that we are dealing with. Why? Because, as the verse says in verse 2, he is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The Hebrew writer also says in chapter 5 and verse 8 and 9, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all of them that obey him. Will you obey him today? Will you look to Jesus for what you need? Whatever it is that you need in your life, my encouragement to you is to understand that you can look to our Lord and Savior, and he'll give you what you need. If you're not a Christian, I encourage you to consider making that decision. You can do that by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. If you are a Christian, the Lord only asks that we come to him with humility and repentance, and he will forgive us of our sins. If there's anyone who needs to respond to the invitation this morning, please do so as we stand and sing.